Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and it is Thursday, April 29th. This is going to be your daily Raid Shadow Legends video. And wow, we now know what the rebalance change is going to be to some of these Void Champions that were teased yesterday on that video released by Plarium on Twitter. So we've got a lot to talk about. I'm going to get you everything you need to know about the balance changes and what's going on in-game currently. So let's get into it. Alrighty, and first off, I want to clarify something that we discussed in yesterday's video, and that is saving your Underpriest Brogni Fusion in case there is a Champion Chase event that goes live this weekend. There will be that small window of overlapping. We thought that might happen. Now we have confirmation that that is going to happen. You can see your Champion Chase Tournament. It says 16 hours. And then if I go back to the Underpriest Brogni Fusion, boom, we've got more than 16 hours. So there's going to be that little window where you can actually double dip your points and fuse Brogni during that champion chase after it launches. So uh, if you have waited to do that, that is going to work out for you as long as you're active and you hit that window. If you're worried about missing that window, like you maybe won't be active or your life's going to be busy, you've got a lot going on, just go ahead and make sure he's fused and, and don't try to double dip your points because you don't want to risk missing out. But now we're going to dive into this void rebounds. So here we go. This is the update 420 highlight post, and you'll see why I've got it cropped like this so that I can have it up while we're talking about champions' abilities. But, okay, so one thing I do want to clarify on this is some people in my comment sections and on stream and stuff were confused about the dungeons getting the extra five levels. Some people thought the potion keeps were going to go up to stage 20 now because the way they've been wording this is all dungeons, excluding Minotaur Lab, it makes it sound like, oh, that means the potion keeps are going to get extra, but no, it says all dungeons, excluding Minotaur Lab and Affinity Keeps, are going to get uh, the extra five stages. So they've kind of been posting that wrong and wording it weird in sentences, but uh, the potion keeps are not going to be getting extra stages. They're going to be staying at level 15 along with the Minotaur Keep, which means the only ones that are going to be going up to stage 25 are going to be the Dungeon Keeps, the Golem, Dragon, Fire Knight, and Spider. And then the other thing that you want to make sure you take note of is going to be artifact dungeon bosses on the new stages, which is going to be 21 through 25. That'll be the new stages. So uh, the boss changes where they're resistant and some of the stuff has changed is not going to apply to the current dungeons in the game. It's going to be 21 through 25, but we'll have additional passive skills. One will limit turn meter decrease. So your things like a lure versus the fire knight and things like that, that'll, the, the effect of that will be decreased. Uh, the other will limit the damage they take from attacks uh, based off of the target's max HP, most notably your Royal Guard, Cold Heart, Septimus, stuff like that. That will not do near as much damage. I believe it's going to be capped at about 10%. Yeah, right there. So uh, based on the targets, uh, no more than 10%. Um, I disagree with that, but that would be a whole separate video. Uh, with that in mind, even tried and tested strategies might need to be adjusted when you venture into the new stages. And don't forget uh, that even basic enemies on new stages will be stronger. They're talking about the waves, like, uh, you know, the dragon. You've got wave one, wave two, and then the dragon. So they're saying uh, the wave one enemies are going to be stronger as well, or like wave one and wave two. Um, and then don't forget, uh, it will be stronger. And as you'd expect, rewards will scale up to match a greater challenge. Uh, so get your champions ready. It's time to raid dungeons harder than ever. And uh, we need to do a little bit of testing. I don't know what the exact drop rates are going to be. Uh, but as soon as I can run these dungeon 25s, I'll get a massive sample size going. I'll start charting it. And we'll see uh, exactly if and uh, and how much it is worth it to do these higher level dungeons. And now let's get you some live reaction on some of these balance changes happening in the game. So first, we've got Visix on bow. Definitely needed a little bit of love. Uh, we don't want people pounding their desk when they get Visix. Uh, it's it's a big deal to get this champion right because it is the last login reward way down the line after almost playing the game for a year. And uh, it, you don't want people to be disappointed when they get that champion. So let's see if they got this right. So uh, the mace is the A1. Uh, and it's going to be up from 10%. Uh, so yeah, you can see there, decrease target's turn meter by 10%. Now it's going to be 15. Uh, and it's a multi-hitter, double hitter. She scales with defense, and she's also going to kind of steal that turn meter. So uh, yeah, that, that A1 is definitely better. Uh, the A2 is going to be redesigned, no longer places that shield effect. Uh, but it will instead place 50% ally protection on all allies for two turns, and you can book that to a three-turn cooldown. That's pretty cool because she is a defense champion uh, with a pretty decent base defense there. So, uh, yeah, that ally protection on a three-turn cooldown AOE, and then the big version of decreased speed AOE, that's a pretty solid A2. 
Uh, then we've got the A3. It's going to be redesigned. It's going to be another AoE. So now we've almost got a candidate for like a stun set. She's got two AoE abilities. Uh, she's going to be decreasing speed, placing Provoke. Kind of similar to like uh, Tormund in a stun set. You've got the Provokes. And then you can also get the stuns from all the AoEs going on. So uh, yeah, I, I think this is definitely a, a good place to go here. Uh, so we've got AoE Provoke. And if they don't change the cooldown, that's also going to be one book to get to three. So it'll be three turn AoE, three turn AoE. A1 that steals some turn meter. Uh, it could be pretty solid here. Uh, place a shield buff on this champion equal to 20% of her max HP, which is good because she's got the ally protection, so she'll be soaking up a pretty decent amount of, uh, of, of damage. But uh, going to be important to get good defense on her and good HP on her because that shield scales with HP, uh, but her damage scales with defense. And she's got such a good base defense that you kind of want uh, like that defense percent chest and stuff. So I, I like these changes. I think that's good. Uh, like Visix is gonna be definitely better uh and, and again some of these first reaction type things it's impossible to know like 100 i can't jump in and test this for 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 five hours or anything so uh but on paper i like what they did here with Visix. she will definitely be better all right then we've got some changes to whirlwim as well another one that kind of gets lumped into the same category as Visix, where people are super upset about pulling them out of shards because Visix is the login reward and then for long-term raid players a lot of them had whirlwind from the battle pass uh so they they both get kind of lumped in there so definitely important to get these two champions right as well but we're gonna have a lot of rework going on so on the a1 the effect added uh place a veil buff on the ally with the lowest hp for one turn if the target resisted the freeze debuff so uh if he attempts to place that freeze debuff and it gets resisted What's going to happen is he's going to get some guaranteed value and at least place a veil on the targeted ally with the lowest HP. Uh, now, what this does actually is open up the door for some zero accuracy builds on Whirlwind because he's not going to need accuracy uh, if you want to go that route. Like, uh, because even if you don't do the freeze, he's still going to get that veil effect. And then we see here that uh, on the A2, it's going to affect added, place a 50% decrease accuracy debuff alongside the decreased critical damage and these debuffs cannot be resisted so he doesn't need accuracy for that a2 so what that does is let you build whirlwind extremely sturdy because you can get him in a high resistance build or something get other stats instead of having to get tons of accuracy to make him viable on placing these debuffs so I like where their head was at there. That, that opens up the door for a lot more fun builds on Whirlwind, and it, it's definitely a big buff to him because he already had pretty decent stats of almost 20k HP, the 12, uh, the 1200 defense, the 100 speed, and he has some pretty cool utility to the kit here. So these are definitely good changes to him. Uh, and then we've got the Ice Grave armor is going to be this one, and we're going to decrease the cooldown from six to five. Which, if they keep these books, that's going to be a three-turn cooldown on a two-turn strength and an increased defense. That's huge. That's huge for that ability. And then the passive here. I always call it a passive because of my Diablo days. The aura is going to be increased ally defense by 40% in the Doom Tower uh, instead. I, I wish they would have went all battles here. Uh, so, I, I wish they would have kept it defense. And I wish they would have made it like 25% in all battles. I get that the percent can't be super high. But uh, they're trying to make him a, a priority in the Doom Tower. He'd be really good for high resistance builds in the Doom Tower because he can be built high resistance. And then he's also going to be placing a, a decreased accuracy that can't be resisted. So Whirlwim will be amazing in high resistance compositions, especially for the Doom Tower. Then Solus is also getting a little bit of change here. We've got the base stat uh, speed increased to 97, up from 87. I love that change. Uh, 87 in the current landscape of Raid was just too slow for a Void Legendary. Uh, I love that. that. I think that's the right move to make. Uh, I, I would have done the exact same thing on him. 87 to 97 is perfect. And then this confuses me a little bit. Defense increased up to 120. His base defense is 1255. I think what happened here was they're talking about a level 1 champion that is like unascended, like the base version of the champion. Maybe that's when uh, the stats are that low. But the, the index here shows the fully ascended level 60. So what it is, is that's up about, you know, what, 10 to 10 to 14%, something like that, uh, for going from 105 to 120. So uh, the maxed out defense will probably go uh, up to like 1450 or something. It'll go from 1255 to like 1450. So pretty solid. If I had to guess, I could be wrong. Uh, the, the attack is decreased. That doesn't matter. He scales with defense, if I remember right. So yeah scales with defense so he doesn't need any 
attack. But uh, his base defense should go up a couple hundred, which I think is needed. 1255 is a little bit low for a defense scaling Void Legendary, so that'll be much more online. Good changes so far. And then he's going to hit about the same because they say the multipliers are slightly decreased to uh, to to uh, to, to kind of go coincide with the changes to his base defense. It'll be a lot higher to scale that up. So he'll hit about the same, but uh, he'll be a lot more generally useful because of the increase in speed is huge. Getting 10 speeds big and then also uh, getting a lot more defense to be more sturdy. So um, not like ridiculous changes or anything, but definitely the, the right direction here on Solus. Then we move into an epic exemplar. Uh, the A1 here is going to get an added effect that will uh, increase one of the target's skills cooldowns chosen at randomly by two turns. If the target's under a weakened debuff, uh, then it will increase the skill cooldown to the maximum. That's that's pretty solid. That's pretty good on an epic uh, A1. Uh, then the A2 is going to be increased from 50 to 75, which I think means when booked, you're going to be able to get this to 100%, and we can get that to a two-turn cooldown. Uh, so she'd be pretty solid for boss fights because uh, you, you got that two-turn just permanent uh, big version of weaken. So uh, yeah, not bad there. Uh, then we've got the uh, the cooldown going to be decreased uh, to four, and it was five, and then we get one book. So uh, yeah, that'll be a three-turn cooldown where we can place a freeze and a block cooldown skills. Then we can also do it on the A1. So um, yeah, definitely good changes because Exemplar saw basically zero play. Um, so I, I don't think she's going to be like meta or anything, but hey, uh, anytime we take an unused champion to make them a little better, I'm all for it. Then for Woron, another Void Epic, we've got the Blade Surge A3. Debuff chance increased to 75. So what this is, is a poison uh, and a four hitter. And if we go to 75, we get 25 from books. She's going to have uh, attack one enemy four times each hit, 100% chance of placing a 5% poison for two turns. Uh, we can get that to a three turn cooldown. So uh, she could be pretty insane for... Uh, Unfortunately, she gets really no other boss utility. She's got a single hitter. This should be a multi-hitter as well. This should be two, three, uh, four. That would just have a much better ring to it on her kit. But uh, yeah, so I would say like she'd be a really good early game clan boss uh, poisoner because she's got uh, a bunch of poisons here on the A3, uh, three turn cooldown, and a pretty a pretty great base speed of uh, of 108 and a good base attack of almost 1500. So uh, yeah. It's all right, Rowan again doesn't see a whole a whole lot of play. So uh, anytime we can we can bump up some of these void epics that don't really see any play, I'm all for it. So at least Rowan's a little bit better now. Towering Titan next in line on the rebalance list here for the void epics. Uh, we've got okay, so he's going to be switching to scaling his damage with HP, which is definitely a needed change. He should not be scaling with attack. So I like that. Uh, and then he's got a good base HP of almost 24k. So definitely good change there um, on the A1. We'll scale with HP and break defense, so pretty solid. Uh, then we've got uh, attacks four. Then this one changes to four times at random, uh, which is the same. And then a provoke debuff on the first hit. Uh, okay, and then as an additional 50% chance to place. Okay, so it's just going to keep going up on the subsequent hit, so it'll be a little bit more reliable. Uh, of a provoker and then on the a3 uh, shield duration increased to three turns when ascended i like that uh and then the skill grants the champion an extra turn okay so he's gonna place increased defense on all allies for two turns and then place continuous heal buff on this champion for two turns because remember he does a provoke so he needs a little bit of help sustaining as well as a shield but uh for two turns but that was increased to three turns of their max hp okay yeah uh, again uh, do I think he'll be ridiculous? No, but he'll definitely be a little bit more reliable. Uh, when booked, this is almost an AoE provoke with a defense break on the A1 and then uh, a lot of tankiness for your team here. So, okay, again, kind of in the same vein as the other ones. A Void Epic that didn't see much play getting a little bit better. And the next one to talk about is Suwai Firstborn. Now, a lot of people were theorycrafting that this is probably Coldheart and it does look the same with the ponytail and stuff. But yesterday we were talking about this on stream and I was like... Um, unless Coldheart got some work done that we don't know about in the offseason, the chest area definitely does not match up. But uh, when we go up to Suwai Firstborn in the Barbarians, the chest area matches up. So we were kind of theory crafting that uh, you see how that matches up a lot. Uh, that, that looks more, more similar. So I was theory crafting yesterday that this is probably Suwai, and it definitely is. But we've got Utter Rampage being reworked. And Utter Rampage is going to be the A2 here. Uh, attack all enemies. I like that. Three-turn cooldown AoE. 
uh, 75% chance uh, to place a decrease attack. And then the AoE with a second hit uh, as long as it was critical, but that's going to be removed. And then we're also going to be getting the buff chances with the books. So it will go to 100% because it starts at 75 plus the 25. So we just got a three turn AoE decrease attack. So, okay, a decent change to uh, to Suai here. Just a little bit of a buff. Then for Bra Mao, we're getting changes to all of the abilities. The A1 is going to have a more reliable freeze. Uh, the A2 is now going to boost turn meter. So he's going to be really good in high speed builds because he'll be filling up turn meter of allies. And that was already a decent ability here for Faction Wars. And then so was this A3. We're getting the cooldown reduced to six. So booked. It's going to be a four turn revive and place a block damage on uh, on the revived allies. And then the aura is changed to uh, to Faction Crypts instead of Arena. So yeah, Broad Mile will definitely be a great Lizardman Faction Wars progression champ for sure. And he'll be amazing in Stage 21 because uh, the Stage 21 boss for Lizardman hits really hard. Having revive in that Faction War is huge. So I like these changes with Broad Mile. He'll definitely be great for Faction Wars. Then for Beardall, Fellhammer, defense increased, HP slightly decreased. Defense was comically low at 683, so that's probably going to be going up to like 900 or something. And then the HP will probably go down to like 17.5k or something. Uh, this is the A1. Skill upgraded. We're going to get a lot more. Uh, well, we're just, I guess, I guess we're condensing the books a little bit, and then we're changing it to be uh, three books of buff and debuff chance to make that heal reduction a lot more reliable. Um, that should honestly just be 100% when booked. Um, but it is the A1, so they probably don't want it to be, like, a guaranteed permanent because it's on the A1 for an epic. But, okay, uh, not that crazy a change into Bear at all, but all in all, probably good because his defense was just way too low. Then for Whisper, we've got changes to the A2 and the A3. Uh, effect added on the A2 will place a 30% increased crit rate. Okay, cool. So you can build her with super high crit damage and, and forego a little bit of crit rate there. Uh, kind of similar to, like, a Cold Heart when you've only got to build, like, the 70% crit rate. Uh, then uh, Whisper is going to be exactly the same here because of the, the buff here going on. And then the Fury or the Flurry is going to be uh, cooldown reduced from 6 to 5. So it can be booked to 4 and it grants an extra turn. So it's basically kind of a, a 3 for pseudo cooldown there, uh, getting extra hits. Uh, so yeah, Whisper can actually do uh, a, a lot of DPS in like a like a, a clan boss type scenario. And she'll be uh, a little bit better at that. Not Again, not amazing changes probably. But definitely helps her out in terms of cranking uh, damage out in the role that she was used in. So that covers the Void champions that are being rebalanced. And wow, uh, Visix and Whirlwim are going to be pretty solid now. Visix with the two AoEs. Whirlwim can be built completely different. It opens up a lot of possibilities with him on being very sturdy and high resistance composition. So uh, all in all... I think it's a pretty good job on the balance changes. Uh, the epics were a little bit, eh, you know, all right. They're, they're a little, uh, Broadmouth definitely got a big buff. Uh, but yeah, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the with the changes to the champions here. Now let's get you caught up on what is going on in game. In terms of tournaments going on right now, the Fire Knight's going to be ending. This is a pretty standard Fire Knight tournament. Uh, I would at least get your core hammers on the right side. Other than that, it's a pretty normal Fire Knight that you can uh, you don't have to go super hard on. Uh, we're going to have Classic Arena Takedown starting tomorrow along with Champion Chase. This is going to act as a pseudo countdown most likely to the 2x Sacreds launching. So when this countdown hits zero, I expect the, uh, the, uh, the, the effect added to the portal here. We'll see it like shooting up to the sky. But before you yank any Sacreds, you definitely want to come in and verify under the eye here. You'll see Sacreds buffed up to 12% legendary chance so definitely verify that before you pull any sacreds then if we dive into the events tab champion training you've got a couple more days left on this um we've done so much champion training recently that I wouldn't feel bad about skipping this but if you are going to do it try to get to 5250 to get your uh core hammers but uh not a bad one to kind of take off and, and relax because we've done so much of this recently uh dungeon divers that one ended and we were able to get a couple more rewards on there. So now let's go ahead and go into the shop and cover some of the offers. So first up, we've got the hot uh, or the great deal mix pack here of 50. And then let's start here. 8, 5, uh, 80 brews. Okay. And we've got six four-star chicken and four five-star chicken. And that's going to do it, huh? A 2.19. Yeah. Um, theoretically, it's all right if you really need the chicken and, and the books, uh, but it is it is technically one I would pass on. Monthly pack, you've got one day left to decide on that, and it's technically a pretty decent offer. Remember, you are going to get that sacred boosted up this weekend. Uh, the pack string, 
I don't like, I've seen this one before. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this one. Um, I can show you, I, I can't see them all to plug them in. I'll show you the first one just in case you're curious um, how it kind of starts off here. But we've got the five energy refills and the 850 energy. Um, boom, yeah, 1.27. So I'm not really interested in going down uh, that path and getting started there. Uh, $40 for life start, uh, for life steal epic gear. No, thank you. Um, okay, and then we've got this one's gonna be the one that people are probably curious about. Uh, ooh, sixty dollars. That seems like a lot for that one, though. Um, let's see, let's see what it should have been. I think sixty is gonna be too much. Um, one thousand energy, and then uh, we've got two sacred and three legendary tome. Yeah, one point two eight. This one should have been like $30. I don't know why it's 60. Um, unless this was like, uh, they give you this every day for three days or something, but no, that, it just is what it is. Yeah. That's way too much. Uh, in my opinion, they, they're always trying to charge $30 per sacred shard and it's just not enough bang for your buck. Um, uh, but they, they're, they're sprucing it up a little bit with some guaranteed value besides it, but, uh, not quite enough in my opinion. It still grades out pretty bad. So, all right, that will do it for this update on the, uh, the the changes coming through to the game. And I will link to that post down below if you want to be able to pull it up. And as always, for my wrap-up videos, I will be live right after sending it out. So, down below in a pinned comment, if you see the link to my stream, you will know I am live for the next few hours. Talking about all this stuff going on and hanging out with you guys playing some raids. So, as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.